Hi everyone, I'm Candace Bergen. I'm the House Leader for the Conservative Party and the Member of Parliament for Portage Liz Gar. And uh, I'm here with my friend Chris. <laughs> I'm uh, a Member of Parliament from the riding of Grand Prairie Mackenzie in Alberta. So it's yeah, uh, great it's to It's a little ways away from, from Manitoba. A little but bit. Every day this guy and I work together. That's we're, right. Yeah. We're actually, uh, well, not necessarily in this office. This, we're right now in my my office uh, in Centre Block in Ottawa. And uh, uh, we have a lot of discussions in, you know, what I like to call the sharing circle. Right. Here, right, <laughs> right. right in front of the fireplace. Right. Well, we spend uh, a lot of time figuring out what, the, yeah. uh, what we're going to do in terms of strategy. We all also talk a lot about what Canadians are telling us. And so yeah. we try to well, bring that common sense to, to We talk. get frustrated. Like, we, we're, we're here in Ottawa every day trying to deal with these liberals and so a lot of the things we're talking about Chris and I um, on a day-to-day -day basis is what we're doing gonna do in question period that's right but anyway the reason we are making this video is uh, I mean we've done videos before in fact I right. think it was last budget we, did, right. we sat here and did a, <laughs> did a video but my son Parker who's uh, who's part of the Millennials he's like mom nobody's watching CTV or CBC or global apparently all you guys are watching YouTube um, and there's some really good things on YouTube actually. Right. There's some um, kind of uh, the pe people outside of the norm who are talking about things that I think a lot of folks are That's listening right. to. So what Chris and I want to try to do is uh, talk a bit about the budget. Right, that was today. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of depressing when you talk about your son. I mean, <laughs> I, I just think about my kids. and How old are yours again? Well, they're 12, uh, 9, and 7. They're, they're going to have to pay this, this, this budget off. Yeah. That's a lot of money. Did you hear? So our our um, our colleague Tom Kimmich. Yeah. He when he asked a question earlier today, he uh, he said, "This and I, I think it's so true. You know, this is a great budget if you're a banker, a uh, Bay Street executive, Bay Street, or, a, or or bond, bond holder, bond holder, or a bureaucrat, or a bureaucrat. Yeah, that's right. The, uh, and anyway, he said, if you combine the debt from Crown Corporations and government debt." 2019, it's a trillion over a trillion dollars. I know it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. When we when we talk about a trillion dollars, that's never happened mm -hmm. in Canadian history where we've run up to a trillion dollars in terms of combined debt. Yeah. Our, our kids are gonna have to pay that back. Do you think though that like do you think kids actually understand what that what that means? Like your right. kids are pretty young, all right? Like well, I'm look. thinking more of my like twenty. <laughs> do you think a twenty year old? I I don't know. I know my 20 year old probably understands, but do you think a lot of 20 year olds actually understand what a trillion dollars uh, I don't know what is? a trillion dollars looks like. I, I don't know what, you know, I don't think anybody really knows what that means. That, that is a number that is so foreign to anybody. Yeah. I think if I took five bucks from my kids, they, they'd feel that, but they wouldn't have any concept or Do idea. you think, Chris, then, then maybe that is why a guy like Justin Trudeau is still so popular because the majority of, of, of millennials or you know even 30, 40 year olds just do not understand because they're busy with, you know making, making trying to make a living. Like I, I, why, I, I, why yeah. is it that we can't seem to understand the damage the deficit is doing to us? Well, I don't think I think part of the reason is it's like when we're spending on our credit card. It feels good when you're doing it. It's only when you have to start paying it back when you're forced to do that. Of course, if we, we if we run a debt on our credit card, we have to pay it back every month. The bill comes in the mail. For government, it doesn't happen. So there's 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 nobody that says time to pay up everybody. Um, you know, the spending spree is over, and it's time for everybody to to start paying up. Governments don't have that same. Yeah, they don't get the bill. They don't right? get the bill, and, and no it's, credit card bill. And, and and I think for some governments, um, if they if they don't believe that there's a problem with it, or if they if they if they fundamentally don't care about it, um, if they're if they're run by by people like Justin Trudeau, who clearly doesn't seem to have any problems with. With deficits, um, you know, they, they, they just aren't motivated because they're they're going to be running for re-election every four years. And, so uh, in their mind, it's like just it's, keep spending and there's, no no one no, no one, one calls attention. for yeah. the bill to be paid. And so I think that's that's really a significant problem. Now you now you talk about Justin Trudeau's popularity, but I, I think over the last couple of weeks he's had kind of a tough <laughs> couple of weeks. You know, he uh, I, and I think Canadians start to see. 
when we talk about a trillion dollars, people don't understand that maybe. I, I think, and I don't blame anybody for not fully understanding or grasping what that looks like. But when they, when we start seeing the Prime Minister taking holiday after holiday yeah. after holiday and bringing <clears throat> dozens and dozens of his friends along the dance, on the taxpayer. Right? And the dancing. The dancing and, the... And, the, and the spending. I think people start to understand maybe that's a waste of taxpayers' money. Yeah. And I, I think I then right. people, like I, I've heard from a number of people over the last couple of weeks that are just kind of getting fed up and I, I think the polls are starting to show that, that, yeah. that people are just getting fed up. I think, and you're right, I, th I think that there's kind of, um, there's been a number of things that are starting to layer on, right. on him. Uh, and I think for sure there are people who voted for him with the right intentions, right? Mm -hmm. People said, hey, you know, he's new, he's fresh yeah. and, and, and all of that stuff. I mean, we saw it because we've been, yeah. we've been, we've seen this guy since he was elected in 2008 and, and he wasn't what he, he put himself out there to be. Yeah. But, um, you know, you, you add paying the Omar Qadar 10 right. and a half million. And yeah. then I don't know if, if everybody knows, but, but the news came out yesterday that the liberals have actually appointed the lawyer, one of the lawyers for Omar Qadar. Uh, is now a federal judge, yeah, I heard and that. he was a lawyer as well for the uh, Toronto uh, Seventeen. Or, or Toronto, the, was, yeah. The what, what was the number? Eighteen. <laughs> I think it's a Toronto, a bunch right. of terrorists. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, like, I think people see that, and they go, "What is? Where is this guy's priorities?" And, and they're yeah. like, why, "Why does he want to cozy up with these terrorists? <laughs> like, hanging out with Boyle and uh, well, and then and of course, uh, what, what's uh, now uh, happened well, in I, in India, you know." I don't know if people fully understand, but this guy, this this guy that he was hanging out with in India, that actually came on invitation of the government uh, to India to to celebrate with the prime minister at the <laughs> at the high commission, he, he he was involved in an attempted murder of a of an an Indian a cabinet minister here in Canada. Yeah. And there, there was I guess three he shooters. Club, and he club, like he clubbed he U, he well, Ujel Duchamp. Yeah, Ujel Duchamp, the former premier of, of former BC. Former premier of British Columbia. Former got the, liberal got cabinet the, minister. Years ago, he was involved in in I understand he was involved or alleged to have been involved in 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 beating him up and uh, quite quite, you know, quite seriously. Um, so, so anyway, I, I have no idea why Justin Trudeau is hanging out with these people. You know, the folks that I'm hanging out with are are a little different. They yeah. they are concerned about you know these payments to Omar Khadr. Uh, I've had a number of veterans approach me and 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 tell me um, very similar to to the ones that talked to the Prime Minister in Edmonton, just saying you know I, I gave a lot. I, I didn't expect handouts. I didn't expect any any lottery win because of my service. I, I did it because of my love for my country. Also, I you know I, I I thought it would be an interesting career, um, but also understood the sacrifice that was involved, and and all they want right now is just a government to take care of some of the injuries and some of the the, the traumas that they've gone through, and, and they've been fighting the government. Some of them are taking the government to court right now, Trudeau. And but of course, every I mean I think what what this shows, and I just said that I did a couple of interviews in my local media an hour ago, um, and everything it seems that Justin Trudeau touches is disingenuous. Whereby he says one thing and does, does something different. Whether it's on veterans, whether it's on, I mean, another group that he's completely abandoned are people with disabilities. Right. Um, done absolutely nothing, whether it's autism, whether it's Lyme disease, uh, whether it's uh, basic, people with di type one diabetes. Right. He does something completely opposite or, and I'm gonna say this, this whole fake feminist thing that he he puts out, um, he says one thing and then does something completely different. And 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 on veterans, I, it's the same thing. He he made big promises to them, yeah. and then broke them. Yeah, he did. He promised during the last election that he wouldn't take them to court if if he was be, if he became prime minister. He said that no veteran would ever have to fight him in court for the for the, for the benefits that they deserve. And we were accused, like like let's Chris, let's be let's be yeah. frank. Veterans were not happy with us. What what we did, you know, rightly or wrongly, and veterans knew when we said something like they they actually, they knew they could believe us. Right. They might not like exactly everything that we did, right. Right. but they knew we weren't. Long well, smoke, you're, right? you're right, and let's let's be honest. We we had a number of veterans' offices that had been designated, or uh, they, they were, the the analysis had been done, and they were underutilized. Yeah. And so our yeah. government, yeah. in an effort to to put the money elsewhere in terms of supporting veterans in different ways, um, we decided to close those offices or move them to 
be combined offices with service Canada centers. Yeah. Um, so let's let like let's just yeah. let's just be very clear on this. Yes. Um, again, acknowledging that for some veterans this was a hardship when some of these offices were closed, but yeah. for a lot of them it was actually combining offices. Right. Um, but certainly what happened was the Liberals took that issue, they said Conservatives shut down veterans' right. offices and we are going to listen to veterans and, we're, and they made promise after promise after promise and like everything, um, say one thing and, and, and Well, they, they've reopened the offices, but what veterans are telling me is that they didn't use the offices. They, 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 they said that was, that was kind of just an iconic thing that, mm -hmm. that, that happened, there was some frustration about it when, when it happened, the way it was rolled out. Um, but they say, we didn't want them reopened. What we wanted is a government that would listen to our, to our needs. I think they they want to be respected. Well, now, vet, veterans I, I, deserve I, I, respect. They, they deserve all that, they, but, but, but Candace, they're, they're not demanding anything special. They're asking for the, the dental benefits for, for injuries that, that, they, that they incurred. They, they're, they're asking for supports that were legitimately offered to them because of injuries that they, that, that they incurred. See, they're not asking for anything special no, or asking for things that, aren't. you know, they're asking for legitimate things and they're not getting started. Sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. No, I inter you're in, I'm interrupting. You're <laughs> tr interrupting my interruption. Did you see in this budget that was just tabled today an increase to CBSA for uh, what they're calling asylum seekers, which uh, I'm, I'm from Manitoba. These are illegal migrants who are coming across the border. Right. So we have just seen an increase in the budget right. for money for CBSA to help these illegal migrants. So, you know, no money for veterans, right. uh, obviously no tax cuts for families. Yeah. Uh, and listen, I'm, I'm not saying, there are legitimate refugees. Right. Um, some, I don't know if they're coming across the U.S. border, but legitimate refugees. Absolutely. But really not across the U.S.? No, they're, they're not fleeing a dangerous situation. Right. Right. Well, and, uh, but again, yeah. Trudeau's like, oh, we got to, we got to, we got to, Placate that. Well, there's a lot of money people. being spent there, and it, it, it and it didn't need to happen, of course, when the prime minister um, beckoned all of them to come with his tweet saying that Canada would yeah, always remain Canada's open. Yeah, Canada's open. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you know, it, it was a disservice to Canadians. Canadians have to now pay for for what he's caused, but it, it's a major. It's so disingenuous to the people that that thought that there was some hope to stay in North America mm -hmm. if they just crossed the Canadian border. The vast majority of these people are not legitimate refugees. They're, they they are being brought over. They're being um, housed. They're migrants, for a while. right? They're migrants who are moving from. Um, well, you know, I, depending I, where they yeah. they started, I, I suspect they, they're, that they're illegal. Um, and they're illegal residents of the United States. They're worried about deportation, and so now they're they're looking for for a safe haven. The, the process doesn't allow for people to simply illegally cross the border and instantly become. Canadian residents, uh, they, they, they still have to go through the process, and so Justin Trudeau has, has set these people up for failure, uh, and yeah. um, and Canadians are paying a, huge, a hefty price for that. I think it's it's unfortunate. Um, there's so many other places that that we as Canadians um, are seeing needs needs within our own communities. We know that that you know eight out of ten Canadian families are paying more taxes yes. today than they were I ten, use that, ten, I, I two use years that ago. I used that stat today in my interviews. I I, yeah. I think that's pretty telling. Eight out of ten, because when you think about it, when we were in government, we had tax credits for sports, we had tax credits for kids in art, um, tuition and books. Uh, we were helping people put more money into TFSAs, and the Liberals, of course, right. ditched all of that. And, and the and universal, all, universal child care benefit, universal. which which all, every family received in Income the past, splitting. and, and yeah. we had all of these things that are now being guess, shut down, and, and Canadian families are paying more and 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 seeing less, I think. In terms of benefits, and I, I mean, and I think what what I'm really concerned about when you add add all of this, uh, the policy of this government in terms of energy pipelines, <laughs> pipelines and carbon tax yeah, yeah. is driving investment down to the U.S. where they're reducing taxes, right. and it's like Justin Trudeau is just completely, I don't know if it's tone deaf. Yeah. Or he because he has zero idea of how to actually run a, any kind of a bank account or any kind of fiscal policy. Like investment is going to be leaving Canada. No, it, it is leaving. And I, I've been in Calgary. I, I, yeah, I you're, you're, you know, so of course, you know Calgary this. is a center of, of uh, finance really for for the resource sector. And what we're hearing is just massive exodus of capital, which of course leads to fewer jobs, less development in Canada. 
Um, we, we were hoping that in this budget there would be some indication that, that there would be some um, yeah. some words that were spoken about the necessity of developing the energy sector in the province of Alberta or across especially western provinces where we've really seen this as, as being the, but the lifeblood. Was of, there any, there was, I mean was we, no it's mention. a big document but we haven't no seen mention. any mention. There was no mention so. of, of one of the most important infrastructure projects in Canadian history, which is which is some of these oil, oil the, the, these these pipelines. I just met. Well, what, we were just at a, a post budget uh, event with the leader, right. and there's some folks from the Vancouver Port Authority. Okay. And they were saying that they they said the pipeline Kinder Morgan Trans Mountain has been approved. It it needs to be built. Yep. And there are a lot of people in Greater Even Vancouver yeah. that want that want this pipeline built. Well, they do. They, they know that it's going to create jobs in, in British Columbia. It's going to create a huge number of, of jobs in the province of Alberta. Alberta has been very happy to, to drive the, the Western Canadian economy as well as yeah, like uh, there's a, a lot major of money contributor, that comes out of that. Major contributor oh, yeah. to, to the nation in terms of taxes that are collected through through the, uh, the, the energy sector. But that that's on its knees right now with yeah. the with the lack of, of the, the inability for these projects to move forward. Um, and, the uh, tax. and of course the carbon tax doesn't help. Yeah. Oh, what, yep. now, um, uh, one of our colleagues, uh, Lane Culkin, said that there's like 19, well, I haven't seen it, but like a million dollars, not 1.9 million or 19 million to implement the carbon tax. So I, I don't even know. Oh, there's a huge bureaucrats, <laughs> well, more money for bureaucrats. There, there will be no end of bureaucrats that will be hired to implement so, many of these green initiatives. Okay, but, we should probably anyway. wrap this up. But let's talk right. about tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow is Wednesday, which is uh, the Prime Minister will be in question period well, all day. We, we think he might. He's, I been, did. he's not been showing up to a lot of... No, uh, of but I mean, he these. sends that there's an email that he sends out or right. his office sends out. So I think we are expecting him okay, tomorrow. Very good. Um, today, he confirmed that apparently the government of India conspired, you know, six months ago to allow uh, this Atwal guy to be in India at the exact time that he was there. And then yeah. his own member of parliament from, where, where's this? From uh, BC. Yeah, from BC, right. invited Atwell, and it's this big conspiracy. And yes. apparently this is, uh, our, our, one of our allies, India, did this. Well, <laughs> bunch of, I, I've been, be frank, it's I've, a bunch of, I, I call horse feathers. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in Ottawa since, uh, since 2006. This is the craziest conspiracy theory I have heard in my time here. Yeah. Yeah. I, we'll, we'll see what happens. The cover up, right? The really, cover up. Really, I, I highly doubt that the government of India would go to such elaborate lengths to make the prime minister Give look foolish break. because quite frankly, you know, I don't want to He's get into it. He, on his own. <laughs> he, he looked pretty foolish on his own. Yeah, he does a lot yeah. to make himself look foolish. So, um, Andrew, our leader, Andrew Shear, he's been uh, traveling, traveling the around the country, yeah. talking to people. Well. Just, you know, like just solid, serious, competent individual and, yeah. and then that's that's what we need yeah, i tell you um, that's more than more than who, ever who more also ever. understands like he's got five kids and, and, and right. a min, literally a minivan you and i have both been <laughs> to his place you wouldn't believe like if uh well maybe we'll do one of these sometime from from his right. place yeah, we, yeah. Should. we should do that and you know the dogs running around to the kids and he's got a great family well and, it's it's uh, like but i think he, he he understands what he, what everyday he, canadians are going through he's no trust fund baby i mean andrew um, like us, um, came from average families. We're blessed to, to come from the families that, yeah. that we do come from, hardworking people that, uh, you know, we, we, we don't come from political dynasties. We, we yeah. come from uh, communities that, that have a heart to, to, to build stronger communities. And we're just, I think, very proud to represent the areas that, yeah, that we do. Yeah. And I think that Andrew does as well. And, uh, Look forward to, to continuing to serve with him, and, and uh, I'm hopeful as as the election approaches that Canadians will will see exactly what off, what what we're offering in, in comparison to what this current yeah. government is. Yeah. Well, thank you for uh, for sitting in on our discussion. Um, if you like this format, and if we talked about things that you're interested in, let let me know. You know, write it in comments or share it. I want to put a few more things up on YouTube. I'm you right. know putting it up on Facebook. But let us know. We, we, we know that the message isn't always getting through in regular media. Uh, as my, my son says, no right. one's watching. Apparently, young 
kids, the millennials. I thought I was young, but I'm learning very quickly that I'm getting pretty old. <laughs> I know, I know where I am, okay? I, I know, I'm a Grammy. Uh, so anyway, seriously, we'd like to know if this is what, uh, what you like, or if there's topics that you want us to talk about, just write it in, in the comments and we'll be watching for it and, and we'll do more of this because we want to tell you what we're doing and we want it to be helpful and uh, be able to give you more information on what we're doing in Ottawa. So thanks for watching. Thank you.